drop those old habits you'll never get rid of them but the new birth the power of the new new birth all of a sudden things will start dropping off of your life how many are experiencing that hmm. it's all about the new birth say the new birth we know the scripture and I use it a lot because we got to get the revelation behind it. If any, any man be in Christ, he's, he's a new creation. So it's not that you and I are so smart, but are you in him? Because if you're in him, something new begins to happen. And, and as I've been saying regarding the opposition, see, the devil's not fighting your past. He's fighting your future. He's afraid of what you are becoming And we're learning, we're learning this. Say, I'm learning. Say, we're learning how to be content no matter what the mess may be around us. That means that your sufficiency come, doesn't come from you getting smarter. Your sufficiency comes from the anointing of Christ that abides within you. And we are learning that it doesn't matter what may be around you. I can do yeah, yeah, so there's no limit. You don't have, sometimes you don't have to pray and say, God, is this okay? No, you just need to know it. you can do all things. Yeah, you can forgive that person that really doesn't deserve it. You can really, you can really give into that person's life. You, can, you don't have to worry about lack. Hallelujah. Remember, Paul said, you know, even when I'm in, a, 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 in need, I, I, I know how to win even if i'm in abundance i know how to win so it's it's learning how to draw your sufficiency from christ not from yourself and so with this new birth in you you can do something you can birth something into the world that's never been before you can instead of praying and asking god to bless you why not ask god to give you something greater for someone else See, each of you already this morning, you have something to give, something you can share, something you can bless someone else with. See, so you, you don't need more from God. You all, just take what you have and begin using it. Turn to your neighbor and say, I don't like this. Come on, this is true. Okay, we're going to get to Matthew, but I want to go back to James. We know this, but look in James chapter 2. Very important. Look what it says in, in verse 14. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such a faith save him? See, claiming to have faith is no guarantee you really got it. Is that okay? Claiming to be a Christian doesn't necessarily mean you are one. Saying you love Jesus doesn't necessarily mean you're born again. And th this scripture goes on to say that even the devils know that Jesus is God. So just declaring that you believe in God isn't enough. If those things are true, then other people are going to see something on you. Amen? There's going to be an evidence. Say evidence. There'll be an action. There'll be a deed. There'll be something that you're doing that other people can see in life. Now, I don't know about you. I want genuine faith. How about you? Okay, now this verse goes on. Look down at verse 17. It says, faith by itself. If it's not accompanied by action, it's dead. I don't want a bunch of dead Christians here, man. Uh, you're alive in Jesus' name. Now, you know, that. remember over in Romans, what does it say? It says, Romans 10, 17, we all know it. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word. That's the only way faith comes to you is by hearing the word. But you don't grow in faith by hearing. You grow in faith by obeying, by Obeying what you heard. So your action always reveals your faith. 
If there's no action, you're not believing God. It's simple. If there's no action, there is no salvation. Come on, church. It takes this faith. And with faith in place, all of a sudden, you can embrace the new. You can embrace the concept that God loves you, that you're perfect, you're beautiful, you're flawless, that you can win, that you're the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. You can embrace this new stuff, and it gives you the power to say no to the old. You can say goodbye, old things. So you get to... We spend so much time worried about our theology. I want to encourage you this morning. Look at what you're doing, not what you're believing. What you're doing will tell you what's going on in your heart. One more verse in here in, in James chapter 2, verse 22. It says, his faith, speaking of Abraham, his faith was made complete by what he did. So God gives you the measure of faith, but if you want to complete it, Simply do what he said. I want to complete the work. How about you? I want it, I want it to be perfect. That word complete uh, in, in some translations is perfect. So that tells me that your action, our action, completes your faith. Faith is proved by your obedience. It's the proof. Are you getting this? I want 100 proof, not 90 proof, not 80 proof. I want the whole thing. How about you? So faith in Jesus makes you vibrant. Faith in Jesus, when it's really there, makes you come alive. Hallelujah. How can you not act upon his word when you hear it? Faith is alive. Faith is now. And my life becomes a worship back to the one who loves me and gave up his life for me. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and thank him today. And he goes on, he makes one more statement in verse 24. He says, you see that a person is justified by what he does and not by faith alone. I hope that helped you this morning, putting that in proper context. Only the blood of Jesus justifies you. But if you dare to believe in the blood of Jesus, your actions will change and people can see it in your life. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, I can see it. See, now you're hungry. Say hungry. Hungry Hungry for more. We sang it this morning. You can't be still. You can't be quiet. You can't stay silent. you got to do something. And action comes into your life because you're hungry. How many are hungry this morning? My, 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 my. You're believing God. You've heard the word, and now he is growing deep inside of you. You see, once you experience God, it messes you up. Once you're born again, something new begins. You start to get hungry. As soon as you know there is a Holy Spirit and He's touched you, as soon as you know you have access, you start to get hungry. Not for natural things, not for carnal things, but you get hungry for more of God. Mm -mm -mm. You're born into relationship, aren't you? You're made alive by the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. You are baptized by one spirit into one body, aren't you? It's all about relationship. So you get hungry, and faith will challenge you to do impossible things. It's easy to say, I can do all things, but then you got to do it. When you see the impossibility, it'll challenge your thinking to the core. When you don't know when, when you don't know where, when you don't know how. Have you ever been there? I want to look at that process this morning. You see, new babies are full of life. Noah is full of life, right? Right, Josh? And you don't have to ask him. They're just excited. They're not complacent. 
And one thing for sure, they're always hungry. See, the hunger comes after you're born again. That's a $1,000 nugget. You got it for free today. The, the miracle of the new birth, it may be instant, but you growing in Christ takes time. It's a process. See, something from God will always come to feed you. But you got to be hungry enough to eat. Are you thinking or are you just... So I want to ask the question, where will hunger for God take you? <laughs> Betty, you always mess it up. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Now go to Matthew, Matthew 5. Look at, look at what Jesus said. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what? Righteousness. For they shall be filled. When you live hungry for the presence of God. When you live your life hungry for the will of God. Living your life hungry to serve Him. You're going to be filled. Oh, hallelujah. Hungry for the things of God. Hungry for the call of God on your life. Hallelujah. This morning, rekindle a desperation for God in your heart. Desiring Jesus. Jesus is righteousness personified, isn't he? If you're going to hunger for righteousness, you got to be hungry for Jesus. He made a covenant of righteousness with you and I, and he won it on the cross. Are you getting this? He is our righteousness, and we're made complete in him. So church, always stay hungry for Jesus. Always stay hungry for Jesus. Turn to the person on your left. Say it. Always stay hungry for Jesus. Person on your right. Always stay hungry for Jesus. Let me, let me break this down. Let me simplify this a little bit for you. You might want to take some Facebook pictures on this one. Write this down. What we're hungry for is what we're filled with. Sorry, I had to tell you the truth. What we're hungry for is what you're filled with. It's, it's not always easy to stay desperate for the same level of hunger for Jesus. How many know what I'm talking about? And we can, turn, we can turn hunger into indulgence. Hunger for all the wrong things. You can overdo it. Get sidetracked. Years ago when Linda and I were dating, there was an ice cream parlor called Ferrell's. Any of you remember Ferrell's? It was, it was good. The pigs, no, the Mount Rainier. <laughs> you could go in there and order a Sunday that would, you know, serve 30 people. And, uh, and there's one called the pig's trough. And if you could eat it all yourself, you got it for free. Because nobody could, you know, but that's a great example of indulgence. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. It won't. It's not the right thing. You can also be hungry for good things, can't you? You can be hungry for God things, things that will nourish your life. Amen. So write this down. If you're hungry for what is right, you'll be filled with what is good. So if you're hungry for more of God, Jesus said you're going to be filled. Have that certainty this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hunger to fulfillment. Do you see it? Hunger to fulfillment. That's a process. And faith without works is dead. That's a process. 
It takes a season or some time for you to act upon the things that are moving in your heart. Amen. But Jesus wants you to know this morning, hunger to fulfillment. He ha- he's waiting on you. I-, I want to get into that place of action. I don't know about you. How many want that? So this morning, I want to compare two different things, and I think it will help you this morning. First, in Mark chapter 8, at the end of his ministry, Jesus had thousands of people that had gathered with him in the wilderness. And he makes this statement to, the, to his disciples. He says, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their own houses, they will faint on the way. See, some of them had come from a long distance. Now just look at that. You see the heart heart of God there. They've been with Jesus three days. And they wanted Jesus more than they wanted food. What if we had a church service that lasted three days with no break? I know you'd be here, but... And no, you couldn't stop to eat. See, they were were hungry for something more than natural food. They were desperate to hear. That tells me something, guys. You see, it was their hunger that sparked the miraculous. Because God was about to do something for those people, wasn't he? Jesus was finished teaching, and he was ready to leave. But he said, I can't. I just can't leave these guys. I have to do something first. I won't leave until they are filled. And so if you read that story, it goes on in verse 5. It says, he asked the disciples, "How how many loaves do you have? Got any bread? What do we got to work with? And they said, seven. And so he commanded the multitude to sit on the ground. He took the seven loaves, gave thanks. He broke it, gave it to the disciples. He set it before them, set it before the multitude. They said, oh, by the way, they had a few small fish too. And blessed it, and he set it, he set it before the crowd. And so verse 8 says, look at this. It says, so they ate and were what? Filled. filled. Hallelujah. If you're hungry, God's going to fill you. And they took up seven large baskets. That would be a basket, large baskets of leftover fragments. Now those who had eaten were about 4,000. And he sent them away. Can you see the heart of God in that? Their hunger sparked the miracle. Their hunger created the miracle. Didn't Jesus say, haven't we preached this for years? Seek ye first the kingdom and everything else will be added to you. It's your hunger that will create the miracle. So that's one way of looking at it. A second way of looking at it, what, what if there's no hunger? What if there's no Hunger, lack of hunger. Is it possible that you won't see any miracles? Think of, remember when Jesus went home to Nazareth. Right after this. He goes back to Nazareth into a familiar place. You know the story. And he goes to his own country. Matthew 13. Write this reference. Matthew 13. And look at verse 54. It says, he taught them in their synagogue. And they were astonished. Say astonished. Look at what they said. Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Where did this man get all these things? So they were offended at him. See that phrase, this man, is, they knew who Jesus was. He was that That crazy kid that grew up with the crazy woman that said, oh, an angel came to me. 
that crazy woman that would never confess who the father really was. And so here we have this bastard kid. Who is this man to be talking like this? And they were offended. There was no hunger in them. Well, this tells me something. Without hunger, you eventually will be offended. You got really quiet. Is it okay? You still love me? He never gives up on you. He always loves you, doesn't he? Remember, uh, Jesus talked uh, about the latter days. How many believe we're living in the latter days? And in Matthew 24 and verse 10 and 12, he said, And then many will be what? Offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. We see lawless abounding around us, don't we? And you also see the love of many growing cold. See, being offended will cause love to grow cold. When you're offended, think about these people in Jesus' hometown. They, they were familiar. They thought they knew this guy. When you're discontent, when you're offended, you can't be productive. You can't produce anything. Do you know Christians like that? What do you end up with? You end up with wickedness and lawlessness. You become angry, resentful, indignant, even bitter. And guess what, church? There will be no miracles in such a place. So look at the two. Look at the two. The lack of hunger, you'll end up getting offended and it'll shut down the heavens. But... Hunger will attract the miraculous. Hunger attracts miracles. I want that. How many want that? Don't, searching, don't search for miracles. Just get hungry for God. <laughs> when you live your life hungry, you'll start attracting miracles. And you'll also start attracting provision. Notice God cared for those people when they had no food. You'll start seeing supernatural things come to pass in your life. Hallelujah. See, it's this desperation for God that puts you in the place of miracles. Got to be desperate. And when you're in that desperate place, all of a sudden the power of God flows out of you. Do you realize that loving people, sometimes it's the hardest thing you can do, right? I'm just letting the Holy Ghost settle on you. See, loving people, it's the highest form of spiritual warfare that you'll ever do. Just get out of your prayer closet, quit binding spirits, and come out and actually talk to people and love them. Because that's where the spirits reside. And love never fails. Love never fails. It's good to pray. Don't get me wrong. You get, you get strategies from God in, in the prayer changer. Then you got to go out and act upon your faith. And only those that are hungry will even do that. My God, my God. He's awesome, isn't he, God? Say loving people. loving people. Hallelujah. And now don't do, don't do the plastic love. You know, you come to church. Oh, Roger, I really love you. It's so nice to have you here. Roger, oh, I really like you. I've been, I've been praying for you. You know, Roger, he's really messed up. I don't know what's wrong with him. Have you ever experienced that? 
Don't do that. Let your love be genuine. Just go, Roger, I really love you. I love you, man. Just make it real. Amen? Noah was agreeing. So kind of a few. Now, now one way, I want to stay hungry. I mean, how many want to stay hungry? So one way that you stay hungry is to eat. Let's just bring this down to, to, the, to the real nitty-gritty. You could have an amazing meal last night, but guess what? You're probably hungry again today, right? And uh, it's been proven, maybe some of you have experienced this, if you go into a season of prolonged fasting, after three days, you lose your hunger. And the, God, uh, the body begins to do things differently. Because, oh, they, okay, I guess I've given up on you. I'm going to have to look for another source for my sustenance. Amen? So, so that's in natural terms. But I believe in spiritual terms, it's the same way. After three days, you'll lose your hunger for the word. If, if you don't feed, come on, catch this. If you don't feed your passion, if you're not in the word, if, if you don't desire to serve God and be in the house of God, if you're not careful, you'll lose your hunger for it. Yes. I know leaders that were hungry for God until it was time for them to retire. Uh-oh. I'm not hungry anymore. I got to go. I got to leave. I got to go. This is my time now. Being hungry means you're weakened. And remember in that story in Mark 8, Jesus was concerned for the multitudes for their strength because he didn't want them to faint on the way home. So it tells me when you're hungry, you're in a weakened state and there's triggers going off and say, you need to eat, you need to eat, you need to eat. May all of you have Holy Ghost triggers that when you're hungry for the Word of God, you just get into the Word of God. When you're hungry for fellowship with the saints that you're just here. When you're hungry for worship, you'll just put up your hands and come on church, get this. He was so concerned. Remember he said, if I send them away to their own houses, they might faint on the way. Because some of them came from long distances. So that tells me a hungry person is vulnerable. When you're vulnerable, that's when the devil comes to entice you. See, God is attracted to the vulnerable, isn't he? His passion, his hunger is to care for the widow, the orphan, the vulnerable. And Jesus will never send you away hungry. Not in this house. Amen. Amen. Think about Jesus in just the way he lived. His hunger for the mission that he knew he had to fulfill. His passion upon the cross. You see, his hunger released his power. And now we walk in, in his power today. Thank God for it. Lift your hands. Thank God for it today. My God. Let's look at this process for a minute. So if you're hunger, if you're hungry... Hunger will lead you somewhere. You'll have to begin to do steps. Hunger leads to desperation. A hungry person is a desperate person. In spiritual terms, now, desperation is your friend. But do you, do you know that there are things to come that can come in life to rob you of your desperation? To steal your hunger away from you? I want to look at this for just a minute because this is where we live. This is kind of where the rubber meets the road. I know a lot of Christians that were hungry for God years ago, but they, they've lost their hunger. They're, they're no longer desperate. I wouldn't say they're content as much as they are asleep. Things that can rob you of your desperation. Number one, ease. That constant pull of ease. 
What do I mean? Just taking it easy. Don't enjoy ease so much that it stops your hunger for serving God. Because serving God is work, and it's not always easy. Right? Come on, church. Taking it easy will rob you. Taking the easy road, Jesus talked about that, didn't he? Taking the easy road, you can miss your day of visitation. We talked about that guy last week, remember? He, he had a bumper crop. and Man, I got so much stuff. And rather than sharing it, he said, I, I'm going to build bigger barns. I'm going to hoard it up for myself. And I think it's in Matthew 12. Remember what he said? And he said, he talked to himself. He said, soul, you got many goods now, man. You got it made. So take your ease. See? Take your ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said, you are a fool because tonight your soul will be required of you. He missed his day of visitation. You see, you only have one chance on this planet to see everything that God has for you. And you don't have time to waste. Oh, come on. I want you to be desperate for God. God has more for you today. So taking it easy is not your friend. Have I offended you yet? That's my, I'm trying to do that. Right? How about this one? How about obstacles? None of you have ever had any obstacles. Robin, you haven't had any obstacles this week, have you? It's demoralizing, isn't it? It just hits you. Oh, man. And, and it takes you out. See, impossibilities will challenge your thinking. You get into that place where you don't know where or what to do, where, where to go, when, when it's going to happen, how to do it. But just remember this secret. Hung, be hungry for what is right, and it will fill you with what is good. Sometimes you just have to ignore the obstacles. How about this one? How about boredom? The monotony of life. I thought this was a faith service. What are you doing? No. Always in services. Linda and I have grown up in church. We have always been in services. And we never miss. Pastor, when is enough enough? Why do, why do you have so many services? Well, I don't think we have enough. See, boredom can come to rob you. It's this familiarity where you're getting accustomed to God. Getting accustomed to miracles and supernatural things. Oh, that's a supernatural service. for I don't need to go. It's just supernatural. Church, never get familiar with people giving their hearts to Jesus. Never get familiar with God's presence in worship. Don't fall into routine and lose sight of the wonder of what God is doing. Stay hungry. It'll keep your faith alive and in present tense. You see, you experience God's presence in the present. How about this one? How about temptation? It's so deceptive. The devil is so clever, isn't he? In Matthew 4 and, and in Luke chapter 4, it says Jesus being filled with the, the Holy Spirit was led by the Spirit into the wilderness being tempted for 40, 40 days. Brothers and sisters, you got to be led by the Spirit first before you can ever handle any form of temptation. If you're not being led by the Spirit, you will always fall for the temptation. That's a, that's a whole other message. That's to encourage somebody here. You see, temptation comes to give you a shortcut to take your hunger from you without the fulfillment. Have you ever been tempted to draw back? Have you ever let discouragement win? See? Temptation to move away from the call of God for your life. He 
just need to understand temptation because that's the world we live in. And temptation is a constant companion to remove your spiritual hunger. Learn the secret. Jesus never succumbed to any temptation. He just said, no, thank you. It is written. No, thank you. It is written. No, thank you. It is written. And what does the scripture says? It says, and the devil left waiting for a, a more, uh, another time. That tells me that he came back time and time and time and time again. But when you're hungry for God more than you are for the temptations of this world, guess what? You'll never fall. Hallelujah. Are these okay? How about uh, this, uh, safe options? Options. Backup plans. Think about Peter for a minute. Remember Peter? He was a professional fisherman. Jesus said, come and follow me. But he always left that door kind of open, left it ajar. And when he was discouraged, when he was disillusioned, when he hadn't figured it out, after Jesus was resurrected, what did he say? All right, I don't know. I, don't, I can't figure this out. I'm just going to go back and do what I know how to do. I'm going back to fishing. Hey, boys, who wants to come with me? And he started up his business again. It wasn't till later when Peter got filled with the Holy Ghost that he really completely closed that door. And the miracles that Peter experienced through his heart and through his hands never began until those doors, until those options were removed from his life. You see, staying hungry means there's some doors that you have to shut. There are certain options in your life that you need to close and just say, no, thank you. I don't need that anymore. And Peter moved into the miraculous after every option was removed. Now that's a scary thing, especially here in our culture. One more. How about reasoning? The heart, think about faith. The heart has its reasons that reason can never understand. The reason of the mind will never understand the reason of the heart. Church, just don't allow anything to remove desperation from your life. Stay hungry. Be desperate for more of God. Amen. Turn to your neighbor. Declare it. I'm desperate. Come on, come on, come on. We're not done here. Hunger leads to desperation. Guess, desperation will lead to invention. What do I mean? You're so hungry, you got to do something. My goodness, Wendy's is closed. It's midnight. Where can I go? I've got to eat. I'm hungry. I'm desperate. Out of your faith. You see, out of necessity, you're going to have to do something that was never done before. And that necessity will frame your world. No one else is doing it. Why? Because they're not desperate like you are. And so your desperation brings an inventive idea. Necessity causes you to live your life differently. You'll live your life full of invention. God speaks of those things that are not as though they were. And then he hands it to you to bring it into reality. When you live desperate, you're going to live inventively. You'll invent some new things. As we study church history, every great church leader that came, he, they invented something new, something that was lost, something that was not there. And we have the body of Christ today based upon all of these wonderful, what we call moves of the Holy Spirit. But it all began with one man, with one woman who was desperate and he had to create something. She had to do something. Someone else that wasn't doing it, they had to do it. Invention. Say invention. See, invention comes because you're hungry to serve God. And that hunger 
makes you desperate. Out of that desperation comes invention. You'll, you'll just find the energy. You'll find the people. You'll just find the time. You'll make a way where there is no way. Amen. And that invention's not the end. It will motivate you. Invention leads to motivation. That's that part in your heart that's really hard to describe. But motivation is talking about ambition. Ambition's not a bad thing. It can be. But it's also a wonderful thing. Motivation, enterprise, longing, fire, spirit, life, desire, passion, motivation. See, hunger motivates you. When nothing else is happening, when no one else will step out, your hunger releases faith and you're motivated. You're moving. You believe God. And hunger will lead you, hunger leads you to action. Your motivation will lead you to action. What kind of action? The action of selflessness. What a glorious day. Today is another day to fulfill your passion. Today is another day to fulfill your mission, your purpose, living in the vision that God gives you, walking by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter if you're in prison with Paul and Silas. Doesn't matter if you're on the mountaintop. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. I'm going to act today. I'm going to love the unlovely. I'm going to pour out my heart. I'm going <laughs> to... Most people just make a living and they miss their purpose. Be hungry and you'll know your purpose. And your action will kick something in. Action will lead to endurance. Say endurance. I don't like this part, but it's all through the New Testament, isn't it? When you act upon the word of God... When you're acting on that hunger because you're so desperate, you're going to need some endurance. Now, endurance doesn't mean to be patient or passive. Oh, it doesn't matter. Go ahead. No, it, it doesn't mean that. Endurance means strength. You're on point. You're on mission. Excuse me, I'm going somewhere. Don't distract me. I'm desperate. Jesus was desperate for the cross. You getting this? He wouldn't let anything dissuade him, but he'd always stop for the one, wouldn't he? Oh, yeah, what do you need? Oh, you want me to heal? I, I, I will do that. Yeah, be healed. Now right, back on focus. Say endurance. Endurance is something you're going to have to learn. You're going to have to have it if you're going to serve God. You, you find the endurance. Remember, Jesus talked about the parable of the sower. And uh, if, if, the, if the seed is put on shallow soil, it grows for a while. But then the hardness or the offense prevents the miracle from continuing. So you're going to need some endurance because this takes a while. Amen? Amen? Just you won't quit. Just keep getting up again. I don't care if you fall down. God don't care if you make a mistake. Get up. Keep moving forward. It's a choice that we make based upon the hunger in our hearts. Mm -mm -mm. But Jesus promised something, didn't he? He promised that those that hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. It's not, a, it's not an option. It is going to come to pass. And so your endurance leads to fulfillment, period. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, you might have to endure a while, but guess what? Fulfillment is coming. Your reward is coming. God is not a man that he should lie. And it says that faith knows that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Come on, lift your hands. My God, fulfillment. See, faith can be seen by your obedience. 
It's the proof. But in every circumstance of life, you can learn to be content. Because you're hungry. You, you can learn to draw your sufficiency from God and not the mess that may be surrounding you. He is the rewarder. He is the rewarder. He is the rewarder of them that hunger and thirst after him. For them that diligently seek him. And now with the new birth inside of you, you can birth something into this world that will outlive you. Hallelujah. Let this process of hunger grip your heart. Instead of praying for yourself, like I said, why not ask God to bless you with something greater for someone else? All over this house, just lift your hands and begin to pray. Each of you have something already that you can give away. Something you can share with others. Something that can bless someone else. But until you're hungry, you'll always hold on to it. Don't hold on to it. Give it, give it, give it. Hunger and thirst after God and you will be filled. When you don't know how. Have you ever been there? When you don't know how to do it. As pressure builds in your life. Have you ever been there? That. The pressure becomes evidence of your faith. Desperation for God puts you in the place for miracles. And then Jesus said, I, look at them. They're hungry and they're desperate. I got to go fill them. I got to go make a difference right there. See, once you experience God, once you're born again, something new is beginning in you. Just close your eyes, lift your hands right now. You get hungry. You're getting hungry. I pray you get hungrier today. Not for natural things, not for carnal things, but you start getting hungry and you attract miracles. You attract provision into your life. You're just hungry for more of God. You want to serve Him. You want to give more of your heart. Hallelujah. And your spiritual hunger will always lead to spiritual fulfillment. Come on, stand to your feet all over this house. All over this house. Can you put some music on, please? All over this house. All over this house. Hunger to fulfillment. You get it? Hunger to fulfillment. Hunger to fulfillment. That's a process. Close your eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for each person here today that they start to see supernatural things come to pass because they're hungry for more of you. We know the word, faith without works is dead. But faith is working here today. Hallelujah. If you're hungry for more of God, just come to the altar right now. We're going to pray a prayer of agreement. We're going to pray a prayer of agreement all over this house. Quick, 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 quick. Quick, 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 quick. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Pastor Joe, Pastor David, help me. Let's pray for these people. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Like I said, it, it's a simple message, but it, it's, we need this. You can lose your hunger by just quit eating for three days. I don't want to be one of those. Just, just the simple, the regular, the mundane. The, oh, you mean it's time to go to church again? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I grew, I grew up in a church where you had Sunday morning and Sunday night. I haven't done that to you yet, but I, I miss it. The reason why we don't do it is you get such a great meal Sunday morning, I want to give you time to digest it. Amen? Come on, lift your hands. Come on, come up, come up, guys. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. I just pray the hunger upon this church, Lord. Hallelujah. Not, not a hunger to follow, but a hunger to lead. A hunger for desperation. A hunger for creative ideas. There's inventive ideas that's going to come out of you. Hallelujah. Not because I've asked you, but because you can't help it. You have to do something with the faith of God in your heart. God's making you hungry, oh God. We pray for our children. We pray for the broken. We pray for broken marriages. We pray for the elderly. We pray for those that are addicted to drugs and alcohol. We pray for those that have lost their way of thinking, oh God. Father God, make us creative. Give us hungry. Give us ideas that will reach out to those that are broken. You promised that you'd fulfill us. You promised that you'd help us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lou, are you... Pay attention. Hey, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
My Lord, my Lord, there he is. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus. He's going to renew your strength. And make you young all over again. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you that you're making us hungry. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Lord, we, don't, uh, we want our city to manifest the presence of God. We want our church to manifest your, your glory. We thank you, Lord, that you're doing that. Jesus, 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 Jesus.